Okay, so these are the notes for 3.2 where we're working with polynomial functions and their graphs. And examples of polynomial functions are listed here below. Uh, really, the, the rules that we're focused on are that x is always in the numerator, it always has a positive exponent, and that it's going to be f some sort of a smooth, continuous curve. Uh, I'm missing a continuous, missing a u in there, continuous curve, but no x is in the denominator, x is, exponents are all positive, so these are all examples. So this includes everything from straight lines to quartic and bigger polynomial functions. And there's different varieties. And so here's how we can tell which kind it is. Uh, the degree of a polynomial is the same as the biggest exponent on an x. So this might be um, y equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4 over 5, negative 4 fifths x plus 3. Um, so this is the equation of that line, but what's the exponent on x? It's a 1. So degree 1 means we're going to have a straight line. Uh, quadratic, which is x squared, would be degree 2, and so we'd have a parabola. Degree 3 means we're going to have some sort of a cubic, and degree 4 means we have a quartic, and we're going to be looking for something more like a w or an m if we flipped it upside down. It is possible to have let sorry, about that. It is possible to have less bumps if we do things a certain way or uh, depending on what the zeros are. We have what's called the leading coefficient test. And, uh, and you might remember, you know, we find the leading coefficient and we compare the degree and that will give us, uh, is it right on, uh, where does it go on the right, where does it go on the left? This is about finding the end behavior. Okay, if the leading coefficient, the number in front, is positive, the right will go up. If the exponent is odd, that means the degree is odd, and that means that the left arrow will disagree. And so I would say the left arrow goes down. So the leading coefficient, positive or negative, tells me about the right-hand side. Odd tells me that they disagree. So when I look at example number two, when a is negative, the right side will go down because it's negative. But because it's also an odd exponent, that means the left side is going to disagree and point up. And all polynomials will follow these leading coefficient test rules. So now what happens if it's a positive and even? Well positive means the right side goes up. Even means like pairs of socks that they match. And so the left side will also match. And so I know both arrows in this graph should be pointing up when all is said and done. And consequently if I do negative that would mean the right side's pointing down and then because it's an even exponent, I know the left side must match and it will also point down. So we can see those arrows pointing down on both sides. Um, if we want to graph a function, uh, a polynomial, one of the things we need to do is find all of the zeros. Um, and so when we try to find all the zeros, we let it equal zero and then we just factor it. Now factoring this kind of a problem where there's four pieces is usually done by grouping. And so we're going to group the first two and group the last two and ask, what do these two have in common? Well, they have an x squared in common that would leave me with x plus 2. And then over here, they have a negative 4 in common, which would leave me with an x. And instead of negative 8, it's plus, because I took a negative 4, 2. Leaving me with x squared minus 4 times x plus 2. But then this parenthesis here can continue to factor as x plus 2 x minus 2, and then of course we still have the x plus 2 hanging out over here. So all of the zeros, um, zeros would be at negative 2, 2, and negative 2. Now we use that negative 2 more than once. So if I were to graph this, I'd have a dot at negative 2, a dot at positive 2. The beginning of the equation was positive, so I know the right arrow is going to go up. The exponent is odd right here, so now the left side will go down because it's disagreeing. Now, we, we're thinking this is a cubic system, sort of a zigzag right through. We're going to learn this in the last little bit, but whenever a root gets used, an, a solution gets used more than once, and it's an even number of times, how many times did negative 2 show up? It showed up twice. So instead of crossing through at negative 2, it's going to just touch and turn around, and it'll come up through 2. 
Now, our main goal here was to find the zeros, which we did. They were negative 2 and 2. But we can produce a graph using what we know at this point. If we want to find all the zeros of x to the fourth minus 4x squared, there's only the two things, but I want to pull out what's common. An x squared is common, leaving with x squared minus 4, which we know factors as x plus 2 and x minus 2. That means the zeros are, sorry, zeros are, this one will be negative 2, this one will be positive 2, and then you might ask the question, well, what do you put out here? Well, what squared is 0? Well, that would be 0. But because it's squared, this really means x times x, so that's like 0 and 0 again. So if I want to, I should really list out the 0 twice. I don't need to, but I'm going to just for safe measure. If I wanted to graph this, this is x to the fourth. It's positive, which means the right side goes up. Positive to the fourth, which is even, means the left side matches. Now, I know I can go through negative 2, but 0 was used more than once, so I'll touch and turn around and come back up through 2. And there's our, our, um, our function, uh, our polynomial function graph. Our focus, though, was again on the zeros. But what's really important here is that we can actually look at these graphs, and if we looked at the graph, it should be really obvious what the zeros are. So let me give you an example. If I went in to y equals and I graphed x raised to the fourth and minus 4x squared, if I graphed this, oops, I'm going to have to adjust the zoom here back to standard. I see the parabola come through. This looks a lot like what I have there. I want to be sure that 2, negative 2, and 0 work, so I'm just going to go to the table. Sure enough, negative 2 gives me 0, 0 gives me 0, and 2 gives me 0. Those are the three places I touch the x-axis. makes perfect sense. Last, we want to deal with those multiplicities and x-intercepts. If a repetitive 0 is, an, is reused an even number of times, then it's a touch and turn. Okay? If it's an odd number, then we're just going to go straight through. Hopefully that's enough to kind of get you through this process of how do we graph these, how do we find the zeros, um, and we'll go through this more in different approaches as we go through the, through the rest of the chapter. Good luck and we'll see you in class.